let's talk Japanese legends. Think of the two greatest ever Japanese sports cars and you might think, well, there are plenty of things to choose from. But how would the Honda NSX and the original Mazda MX-5 sound? To me, they sound like the greatest Japanese sports cars of the past 30 years. So where does an all new, not necessarily all Japanese, sports car fit in among these legends? This is the new Toyota Supra, a car co-developed with a BMW. And James Disdale and I are lining it up alongside these two Japanese greats to see just how spectacular and how reminiscent of its homeland it feels. This is an unconventional triple test then, but we do do more normal ones too. If you'd like to make sure you don't miss these or those, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, etc. Enjoy. So I'm in the Mark 1 Mazda MX-5, the original MX-5. And if the Porsche 911 is the best sports car of all time, then I would argue that the MX-5 is the greatest sports car of the last 30 years. It redefined what a small sports roadster could be. There's nothing necessarily totally original in the world. The idea of the MX-5 came from the Lotus Elan. It's what inspired this car. It's why it kind of looks like it does, and it also defined the mechanical layout. So we've got a 1.6-litre twin-cam engine that looks like a twin-cam engine, driving the rear wheels through a five-speed manual gearbox. There's quite a lot of lean. This is a relatively softly sprung car with a monocoque shell and double wishbones all around, an open rear differential steering that's about 2.8 turns between locks. So the Honda NSX, why does this deserve to be a Japanese sports car legend? Where to start really, where to start? So, well, it's been said many times before, but Ayrton Senna, the great Ayrton Senna was involved in the final sign off of the dynamics of this car. And well, it doesn't really get much better than that, does it? To have a car honed by arguably the greatest Formula One driver of all time. There are other things, of course. It's the first car ever to have a fully aluminium construction, right down to the suspension components. So in this car, we've got a second generation car here, it weighs just under 1,500 kilos, which is, it's quite light actually. And it's the usability of the car as well. So this car originally came out in 1990, and at the time you were looking at 964 era 911s and the 348 Ferrari. But it only weighs something like 950, 940 kilos, something like that. So it brought back a sense of purity to sports cars and it's still really nice to drive today. Just turning slightly on the brakes, there's a lot of roll and then it just progressively moves around in a neutral fashion. It's really lovely to drive, really lovely to drive. Does it feel Japanese particularly? Not, not especially. There are the kind of relatively hard scratchy plastics that were pretty much the norm in the late 80s, early 90s. This car was designed to be usable, friendly, approachable, and you can see why. You sit in it and you've got this low scuttle and the visibility is panoramic. There's so much light being let in. You just know where you are and the controls are nicely placed. I mean, ergonomics, yes, they've moved on in the days since this was designed some 30 years ago, so I'm a little bit cramped here, but the rest of the car just feels as modern as you'd expect. But of course, one of the, the high points of the Honda NSX is behind me. So early cars had a three litre V6, VTEC. Variable valve timing. This car, the NA2, has a 3.2 litre, 294 horsepower, about 224 pounds for the torque. But the most important thing is just listen to it. It will rev out to 8,000 RPM and when you do that, so we're at six now, the last 2,000. What a noise, what a noise. I mean, it's just, it's got to be one of the best engines of all time. It has to be. But what the MX-5 is, is just a real delight. There's nothing that says Japanese about the way it drives particularly. It's just a really beautifully balanced roadster in in a way, the traditional lotusy type of type of form, where lightness is the key virtue, and the engine revs out nicely to about seven-ish. It's just a very easy, nicely balanced, unthreatening 
placid driving experience. Now, what's weird about it, what I hadn't realised last time I drove one, but what you still kind of get in a modern MX-5 in a certain way, is you feel like you sit quite high. In most modern cars, you feel like you're sitting much lower. I don't know if the H point, the hit point, is any lower on modern cars, but it feels it. It feels like you're, you're, you're sitting up a bit. You can see most of the bonnet, even though it's kind of bulbous and drops away. So it feels slightly like you're sitting on the car rather than in it. And that's a theme common even to today's MX-5s, really. It is a compact car with a compact interior. Yes, it will rev to the heavens, but there's genuine torque there. It's not rip your face off fast, but the gearing helps, obviously. Oh, it's just, it's just a glorious engine, and it's mated to this lovely six-speed gearbox. It's a cliche, I know, but it's got the real rifle bolt change. You can just do it with your fingers. Ooh, lovely. Throttle response. It's gorgeous. It's just a jewel of an engine. It's just a lovely, lovely thing. And then there's the way the car drives. Now, you can now see why this thing was a two-time winner of the best driver's car, because even now, it just feels so well balanced. Open it out of this corner now, and you just get that lovely resonance going through your whole body. It's just a sweet, sweet thing. But the handling is just really well balanced. You wouldn't want to push it too far. It's got that old school mid-engined, low polar moment of inertia thing. And there was a time when Japanese cars were smaller inside, had seats that perhaps didn't adjust quite as much as German cars. But once you get beyond that, it's just really nice. It's just really lovely, really pleasingly balanced nothing to worry about just a terrific car that started a trend of mx5 generations that continues till today and it is just the default small sports car choice and others have come and gone and others have threatened it i remember the mgf came out and people said oh well it'll be an mx5 killer as is quite often the phrase when a new car comes out they decide magazines decide well it'll be a killer for the other one i think mx5 sales went up Go on, go on! Oh, oh, oh. The steering was developed in a time before various electronic control systems. There's no torque vectoring here, no, no active diff, so it has to be a little bit slower, gradually feed the forces into the chassis, and you can just feel them building and building. Oh, I could drive this thing around here all day. It's just so lovely. Yes, it's a bit kind of like a normal Honda, and that at the time some people sniffed at that but drive one today and compare it to a modern supercar and you could say this car set the trend it made people realize i don't have to put up with stupid ergonomics i don't have to put up with leaving my spare pair of pants at home when i want a weekend away because there's no boot space i can have it all this car was a revelation and if you're willing to put aside the rather high price i think it was probably around £50,000 back in the day, sort of knocking on the door of Ferrari money. And you were willing to accept that it didn't have the prestige of a Ferrari badge or a Porsche badge. I mean, never mind the fact it was made by the people who were powering Williams and McLarens to multiple world titles. Then you had, arguably, not necessarily the greatest sports or supercar of the time, you had the greatest car full stop. This thing, well, it's just, it's incredible looking back now how far ahead of its time it was in terms of its lightweight construction, its usability. Oh, legend. It is a legend. And I really like it. And I'm going to have to go into the pits now, but I don't want to. I want to keep on going and going. That engine. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Anyway, so I'll go and talk to James. We'll get in the Supra. And... I guess we'll see if it has not necessarily the character of this car because it's a very different kind of car. But if in 20 years time, whether we might be sitting here with a Supra and whatever replacement Mazda or Honda or Nissan or Toyota has come up with for whatever car that they, whatever sports car they're replacing at the time with one of these old classics to say, hey, does it does it continue the mold? Is it one of the great 
Japanese sports cars. Anyway, let's go have a drive, we'll find out, have a chat. Right, so mate, what did you learn from your NSX experience? What did I learn from my uh, what NSX did you experience? Learn? learn, it was, well it's just a, it's a thing of joy that car. It really is, I absolutely love it. It's, um, it's kind of everything you want a Japanese super sports car to be really. It kind of melds the technical with the easy to use. It's just oh, everything about it. The engine, particularly, the engine is glorious. It's amazing. Engine. I'm, I'm going to put it out there, and I think I may have said it's it's one of the best internal combustion engines. Yeah. Top ten, maybe, maybe even top five. I don't know. It's just stunning. Fun to do there, isn't it? A little bit. <laughs> but it's quite nosy, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, the MX-5 is not nosy at all. You can sort of trail it in, and it just sort of. It sort of just sort of, you know, slides along with that game lightweight. Yeah. I think it has got a lot of power, but it's about 115 horsepower, something like that, so it's not very much. But it doesn't weigh a great deal, so yeah. it's just a joy. It's got it's got a lot of roll, but it's just a joy in that old fashioned roadstery, that very old fashioned Lotus way. You know, yeah. You know, it's, it's just lovely. Do, does the NSX feel notably Japanese to you? Is there anything about it you'd go, yeah, that's got a Japanese... I think the control weights, the gear shift particularly, that just that lovely snick, 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 yeah. you can do it with your fingertips. Yeah. That's very Japanese. There's there's kind of a... like a, a Seiko watch oh, like uh, kind of delicacy to it. Yeah. You feel like, you know, if you open one up, lots of tiny, beautifully engineered moving parts and it, it's kind of got that feel to it. What surprised me is it's all aluminium, and so it's, I think it, that one's under 1,500 kilos, which is you know, quite, quite light. Quite. But how modern its driving dynamics are, given it's a 30-year-old design, yeah. getting on for that. And how, I guess, lots of modern supercars own a debt of gratitude. Yeah, good work. Uh, a debt of gratitude to the, the NSX. Oh, yes. Go on, go on, go on. Lovely. A debt of gratitude to the NSX for proving that you know you can have everyday usability, but also a special high-performance driving experience. Yeah. So what's I, what I think is notable about that. So it's funny when you say about the gear shift, right? Because I remember going on that launch of an MX-5, the, I think the most recent one. Yeah. And they have a document of like 16 pages long or something like that, which is all about gear shift action. Of and after you get it to a certain, of course, and after you, so it's after you get to a certain amount, yeah. the idea is it pulls the gear shift home, so yeah. that you you encourage it, yes. in, and then and then the car is like going, yes, please, please yes. feed me another yeah, gear. Yeah. And you drive some cars, and it's a struggle to push the gears yes. all the way in, and that that sort of thing. I think it does that little attention to detail. They do really yeah. beautifully, don't they? It does have but that feel. Strikes me is that I can see out of the Mazda very easily. Yeah. You can see out of the NSX very easily. Yes. This feels quite big, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It feels quite big. It feels like a. I mean, it's it's a it's a great thing, but it feels like a heavy old hectare around here, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it does really. And that you know that some of that's inevitable because it's front engine, rear drive. Yeah. Muscly coupe, isn't it? A bit of a muscle car rather than a sports car or supercar, but it's got a very narrow window. You know, very high window line. It feels remarkably snug, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's strange how it doesn't feel a GT86. Yeah. Ultimately, this car's little brother is a 100% Japanese design, yeah. and it feels Japanese as a result. Yeah, yeah, it feels yeah. much lighter and more mechanical. Yeah. This feels a bit more like a junior muscle car, which is not what you kind of expect from the Japanese. No, and I and I suppose that is Supra, isn't it? Although it's a good car. I don't think you'd class it as one of the all-time great sports no. cars necessarily. And in fact, the other two won what we call Britain's best driver's car, uh, which is something Autocar's been doing for 30 yeah. years, where we take the best sports cars of the year, uh, we test them on road and track together, and we say that one is the best. Now, yeah. both the NSX and the Mazda won yes. it more than once. Didn't they? Yes. they both won it twice. And you can see why. And you can see why. And the, in fact, even when you drive today, you can see yeah. Can see why. This car uh, hasn't won, but it's done pretty well, hasn't it? Really, it's yeah. a nice road car. It's yes. a sort of quite relaxed road car. It's a, it yeah. does move around a lot on a circuit. It's got quite a lot of. It's a lovely everyday, everyday sports car, isn't it? You can, you yeah. can drive one for. Yeah, I, that's it. It's. I'm 
gonna, I'm gonna say metier, but that sounds pretentious. Lovely, I like that one. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. A lot. Does it feel notably Japanese? It, that it doesn't to me. It feels. All, all this heavier. feels quite. German well, all of this feels quite start. German. Yeah. Which is not actually necessarily a bad thing. No. I think a BMW interior yes. is probably nicer than a Toyota one. Yes, so definitely. Then, this doesn't feel like a Japanese engine. No, it doesn't say, and it sounds augmented to me. It does. Oh, it's not, is it? I don't, I'm sure I don't I've asked, I'm sure we are, I asked them no. about it, and they went, no, 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 it's not augmented yet. I think the four cylinder may yes. end up. Well, certainly not electronically augmented, it might have a sound symposium symposium or whatever, yeah. but that's okay because it's actually engine noise, isn't it? At least. Yeah. I mean, I know the latest NSX is turbocharged, and you know, that's, that yeah. is, yeah. turbocharging is the future, but you, you always get the feeling with Japanese manufacturers, if they can get similar performance results, by making it rev higher. Yeah, they would rather do that. And naturally aspirated, that's what they do. And that's what that's what both the NSX and the Mazda do. They've got lovely little revy, naturally aspirated engines. None of them feel, neither of them feel as sort of heavy at the front as this one. I suppose an no. original Supra probably would, earlier Supra probably uh, yeah. would do. It's, it's a nice thing. We are concluding, I think, that this is a, a fabulous everyday sports car. Yeah. I, there are lots of it. Lots of bits of it that I really like, yeah, so. and to live with day in day out. You, on the road, you know, you always know where the back axle is, yeah. and the torque gives you options just to be a bit silly. Little little degrees on the exit, and you know, it all works really well, and the ride's compliant. But I don't think in 30 years' time that's we're going to look back on this car and go, "Wow, that was a watershed yeah, moment." I think you're right. I think that's the conclusion, isn't it? Yeah. Is that this is a typical sports car? Yeah. But. It sounds awful, the styling's lovely, but you could stick quite a lot of badges on its nose. Oh, that's interesting. And, it be... and it would have characteristics of those cars, and you wouldn't necessarily go, oh, this doesn't feel like a, an X or a Y. It's, it's, it's a good, good modern car, but it's not one that I'm, I'm confident. In the whole pantheon, people are going to look back and go, it's great. You know, I'm sure there will always be super lovers who will oh, yeah, quite right. mark it out. It's but, good fun. Yeah. Yeah. but those two cars, MX-5, NSX, interestingly, they are literally both 30 years old. Yeah. You look at them and go, yeah, I mean, they, they, they did something that resonates still today. Agreed. For motor shows, drag races, reviews and news, the usual call to action applies. Like, subscribe and we'll see you very soon here or at autocar.co.uk.